According to the GPS, treasure should be right underneath my feet. I knew I shouldn't have trusted that pirate. Yar, nobody be giving me treasure. All right, back to me memoirs. R, 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 space. R, R, R. Over the last 17 years, Spongebob Squarepants has had a ton of video games. Battle for Bikini Bottom has become something of a cult classic recently. It seems to be the Spongebob game that everyone my age grew up with. Everyone except me, that is. Due to a verbal misunderstanding before Christmas 2003, the game I had growing up was this one. Spongebob Squarepants Super Sponge for the PlayStation 1. This game, much like most Spongebob games, was published by THQ, who were also responsible for Red Faction, Saints Row, Darksiders, and the SmackDown vs. Raw series. The story begins with Spongebob asking the elderly superheroes Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy for their autograph, so he can give it to his best friend Patrick for his birthday. And actually, this game looks really nice for being released towards the end of the PS1's life. It represents the show's art style really well, and even has the original voice actors reprising their role. But sadly, Tom Kenny seems to be the only one not completely phoning it in. Like a calculator! You can count on it! Chapter 1 follows Spongebob gathering the ingredients for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for Mermaid Man. The first stage takes place in jellyfish fields, and I have to say the music is very fitting. I could see it being in an episode of the show. After walking up to Squidward, he gives you your jellyfish nut, which seems like a pretty fitting weapon to have in the game, but then you actually start to use it. It would be enjoyable if it was used as a melee weapon, but instead you use it to catch jellyfish in the background and toss them at enemies. It seems like it would work fine, but it has absolutely no range. And by that, I mean when you throw a jellyfish, they just fall on the ground right in front of you. It's akin to the rock in Friday the 13th. It always seems to just barely miss what I am attempting to hit, and what's making it even more difficult is Spongebob's speed. He runs like he's training for the Olympics, or maybe he's just trying to get away from the camera. Speed can be a lot of fun in games, but when the camera is this close to the character, it can lead to a couple cheap and frustrating deaths. The second level takes place in Sandy's Tree Dome, which introduces the interesting mechanic of keeping your water helmet filled by keeping an eye on the image in the top right of the screen. By the way, this is the only level in the game that uses this mechanic. It also introduces bounce pads that are more annoying than you would think. In a good platformer, when you hit a bounce object, it propels you into the air on impact, but in this game, you just stand and wait for it to throw you in the air. Stage 3 is based on the episode Hooky, but sadly, it's the only interesting thing to mention in this level. Stage 4 cranks the game's difficulty up to 10. There are just way too many enemies to try and take out, with this worthless attack. Then after that pain in the ass, you take part in an extremely boring and easy boss fight. After another subpar cutscene, you start Chapter 2, and in 2-1 you are first greeted by Mr. Krabs. SpongeBob! Now listen, boy! I'm counting on you to use this here coral blower! Whoa, wait a minute. That's not Mr. Krabs, that doesn't even sound right! Formula time! At least he introduces a new weapon for you to use. Too bad it sucks, though. Believe it or not, the coral blower is even worse than the jellyfish net. You can only carry one of its projectiles with you at a time and it messes with your momentum. When you have it on, it's almost like the ground is turned to ice. Then you have to partake in an escort quest by using the coral blower to take Gary to his food bowl. Sounds simple, but it took me six tries to complete it. The other stages in this chapter are similarly annoying. 
each introducing a new item like the balloon and the bubble wand, which both make the awful platforming a bit better. The boss fight in this chapter is again another boring and repetitive mess, this time using your new jellyfish blaster, which like the other items in the game, isn't great. Kind of a bore to use, actually. In the next cutscene, Barnacle Boy asks you to just pop back to prehistoric Bikini Bottom. Sure, Barnacle Boy, let me just pop back in time. I have my DeLorean parked right around the corner. Let's do this. Prehistoric Bikini Bottom is more of the same, but with a surprising lack of dank memes. As you begin, SpongeBob suggests using the pump bounce to progress through the level. Wait, what? You're telling me there's been an alternative to attacking with the weapons the entire game and they don't tell you till you are a third of the way through? I understand that they tell you about it in the manual, but all the other controls that were given to me through on-screen tutorials. Is it too much to ask that the most basic attack of the game is also displayed there? After another mediocre level, Stage 3-2 begins to feel like an actually fun game, with the introduction to the Karate Glove. This should have been the standard attack for the game, using it is actually a lot of fun. Too bad it only lasts 30 seconds long. After you win the chapter, you return to the present, sadly not going to the future. I wonder why they didn't make a future level, it would have been really easy considering- EVERYTHING IS CHROME IN THE FUTURE! Chapter 4 takes place in Rock Bottom, which like most of the game is a bland and forgettable chapter, ending with a boss fight with the Flying Dutchman, and he won't shut up. Expect your lily white livers, I am the Flying Dutchman! Even if the annoying voices weren't here, this would still be the worst boss fight in the game because it literally relies on standing in one spot and shooting at nothing. The last chapter begins with a reprise of the first level of the game, and instead of the normal enemies, you must face Man Ray. Too bad he's killed with one hit, though. Stage 5-2 and 5-3 are both pretty fun. It's as if the developers took everything that works about the earlier levels and put them into these two. Too bad they couldn't spread it throughout the entire game, though. The last level goes back to being annoying by introducing these 3D platforms that move between the foreground and background. What sucks is that it is extremely difficult to tell when they switch. Once you get through that, another boring boss fight happens, and then the game is over. Sadly, this game is just a cheap cash-in on an extremely popular franchise with nothing new to add to the platformer genre, and a paint-by-number story that is about as good as what I assume a Spongebob Cross Patrick fanfiction would be. There really is nothing that interesting or funny about this game, and this video has just been a colossal waste of my time and yours. Sorry.